This unsuspecting opponent goes by the name of Bracco. In this moment, Bracco doesn't know it, but they are about to be instantly deleted by the IED I'm carrying in my hands. Anyhow, we'll come back to Bracco and the IED later in the video, but suffice to say that this video is all about taking a close look at fire and some explosions in the finals and various ways you can use pyro grenades, mines, the flamethrower and flammable canisters to your advantage. G'day Rock Hound here! Fire has a couple of main uses in the finals and to be fair a couple of varying behaviours as well. In the same style as my last video which is a guide to toxic gas, in this video I'll run through some facts about the fire making gadgets, throwables and the flamethrower first and also look at some tactics for using them in game at the same time. Fire can be used for directly damaging your opponents, igniting gas, goo and vegetation and in some instances explode mines and other canisters. Although as you'll see quite a few of these interactions vary depending on the source of the fire. Okay let's look at the pyro grenade, pyro mine and flammable canister first. Just like the toxic gas options the pyro grenade, mine and flammable canisters flame effects all have a 12 second duration. They cover a smaller area than toxic gas though as you can see in this comparison between a gas grenade and a pyro grenade. Compared to one another though the pyro options do cover the same area and all deal the same amount of fire damage while you're in the flames which is 35 HP per second. However the flammable canister and pyro mine both also do explosive damage to you if you're standing next to either of these when they explode. The flammable canister does up to 100 HP explosive damage and the pyro mine up to 70. That explosive effect will come in useful when we look at the IED later on. Again just like toxic gas the damage effects from the fire from all all three of these pyro sources are not cumulative. So any explosive damage aside, being in the flames of one of them is identical to having all three of them burning at your feet. This means that the most efficient use of pyro devices when used by themselves is to either keep them a distance apart or simply keep them in reserve for a follow up attack. When it comes to burning however in most instances your opponents are going to run through the flames because they won't just hang around in the middle of the inferno until they're dead unless they're close to completing a cash out steal and want to take the risk of not moving. Therefore because the heavy build moves more slowly than the medium and light builds they do incur slightly more damage when passing through the flames. A heavy sprinting through a pyro grenade for instance will incur 60 HP damage whereas medium and light only incur 55 so keep that in mind if you're thinking about a full send through the flames. The flip side of course is that if you're throwing a pyro grenade you should expect players to make it through the flames onto your side most times but then you can always pre-drop a mine on your side of the flames in preparation for them running through and there's a good chance they won't see that as they exit the pyro. This can work really well in bottleneck locations like stairwells or doorways where there's a very good chance that your mine will be triggered. The flames from a pyro grenade and mine and flammable canisters have varying behavior when it comes to moving platforms and this is something I should have also talked about when covering toxic gas too. If you throw a toxic gas grenade on a moving platform or have a gas mine set off the gas will remain in one place and the platform will move through it as you can see here. So it's good to be on the front end of the platform, throw the gas at your end and let it affect opponents on the other end as the platform floats along. Pyro mines and flammable barrels also behave exactly like gas with the platform moving through the flames. Pyro grenades are different though, if you throw a pyro grenade on a platform the flames will stay in the same location relative to the platform and travel along with it. So keep those differences in mind when using various pyro on the moving platforms. If you throw pyro grenades or pyro mines on a ceiling both will do damage to players on the floor above so this can be useful if you want to have one of your team defend your cash out from the floor below while the remaining teammates defend from the same floor as the cash out or the floor 
or above. Just remember that you need to trigger the pyro mine yourself by shooting it. And as I mentioned in my toxic gas guide, if you're using the pyro grenade to clear gas from around the cash out, I recommend throwing it to one side of the cash out as it will still kill the gas as long as the flames are in the outer part of the cloud, but it won't block you from stealing. Okay, let's move on to the flamethrower. The flamethrower is a primary weapon for the heavy build and is designed purely as a short range weapon. According to the finals wiki, it reportedly does 89 HP of damage per second. It operates for up to 10 seconds on one fuel canister before requiring a 3.5 second reload time. As well as burning your opponents, it will also trigger all canisters and mines to explode. Here's what the flamethrower looks like when it's being pointed at you compared to when you're using it. The flamethrower can be used to quickly clear an area of toxic gas, igniting it within about a second, so long as there's no smoke or powder present as well. It can also set fire to goo, destroying it in six seconds. The flamethrower is good in close quarters, but its ultra short range makes you pretty vulnerable if you get caught out in the open with no nearby cover or any form of shield. This vulnerability means that it's often paired with the RPG to provide the user with an alternative longer range weapon. Another combination that works pretty well with the flamethrower is to use it as a follow-up to the charge and slam, with that specialization not only being used to bust through walls and damage opponents on the other side, but also as a way to rapidly shorten the distance between you and your opponents, bringing them within the flamethrower's very short range. Despite using that combo as a way to partly overcome the very short range of the flamethrower, I'm currently not a fan of the weapon because that short range is more often an issue than not. As a heavy, if I'm going to choose a short range weapon, I prefer to go with the Sledgehammer with its ability to rapidly destroy buildings. And if I choose the Sledgy, I usually carry pyro grenades as a way to get rid of toxic gas without having the flamethrower. I'd be interested in seeing Embark Studios experiment with making the range of the flamethrower longer but shortening its operation time to make it useful for clearing gas from the cash out areas without having to be right on the cash out. I rarely see other players using the flamethrower in game, which to me says is that it requires some sort of overhaul from the devs. Let me know what you think of the flamethrower in the comments below. Okay, now let's move on to how pyro gadgets and throwables like the flammable canister affect one another when they explode and how they can be used in conjunction with gadgets like the explosive mine. Rather than me running through every possible combination of what pyro triggers what throwable to explode and so on, I've created this spreadsheet, which I've also linked in the video description below, or you can simply pause the video here to take a closer look at it. I won't go through all the combinations it has, but I'll give you a quick explanation about it and talk about two important bits of info. The items in green are the device that is exploding first, either because you or an opponent has triggered it, and then you cross-reference them with the devices across the top to see if those are exploded as a result of the green ones exploding and how that happens. For example, if you explode a flammable canister that's next to a green gas canister, the gas canister will then explode after a delay of 15 seconds and will not be affected by any flames because it will have burnt out. The spreadsheet doesn't include C4 or frag grenades because those are both purpose made for blowing things up on the spot so you already know they pretty much blow up everything. Instead this spreadsheet is more about improvised explosions, things that you can combine almost as a secondary purpose. Okay I'll point out two important things from the spreadsheet. Firstly pyro grenades do not set off mines so while you can use a pyro grenade to clear gas from around the cash out you still need to be on the lookout for active enemy mines as you move in to make the steel. Secondly, explosive damage from the pyro mine, explosive mine and flammable canister is cumulative. This means that if you add two explosive mines to a flammable canister or an explosive mine and two pyro mines to a flammable canister and then throw it close enough to an opponent to trigger the mines, it will provide enough explosive damage to instantly delete them regardless of their build as well as leaving behind flames for another another 12 seconds, and thus we have the IED, a device that kind of brings a lot more value to the flammable canister which isn't usually a favoured throwable. Anyhow this all takes us back to poor old Bracco here. 10 seconds before we met in that snowy Monaco garden, I placed two explosive mines and a pyro mine on a flammable canister, and then carrying the IED with me I was about to jump through a window into the nearby building when I realised it would be in my best interest not to accidentally melee the flammable 
flammable canister as I attempted to jump through and then I spotted Bracco to my left and just threw the IED straight at them. This also turned out to be a good opportunity for me to learn that throwing the IED at opponents who are close to you isn't ideal either because as well as sending Bracco into another universe it did 319 HP of damage to me as well and this shows how the IED is equally as dangerous to its owner as it is to its victim. I've had them shot in my hands while carrying it multiple times and that never ends well. Or the time another flammable canister exploded next to me while I was carrying the IED. I've also discovered what appears to be a bug in the game where if you have explosive mines and pyro mines on a flammable canister and you just right click drop the canister this detonates the IED which it shouldn't because none of these items are detonated themselves by right click dropping them. So I think that might need fixing. Safe to say though for the time being if you're carrying an IED you must throw it away at some point. Alternatively my more favoured way of using IEDs is to simply place the flammable canister in a doorway or similar area and then hide the mines on the floor behind it. Then when an opponent comes along and goes to pick up the flammable canister or just jump over it they suddenly discover that they've actually just given themselves a short break from the game while they wait for a revive or a team wipe to end. Of course if you want a more controlled timing for the explosion you can always throw C4 into the mix as well. Combine C4 with four mines on the flammable canister and you have an IED that does a huge amount of damage to buildings as well as anybody nearby. Just remember not to right click drop this combo either. Anyhow that wraps up my guide to pyro in the finals. Let me know in the comments below how you like to use pyro in the game or if you have any pyro combos that you think are unique or how you find using the IED. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Do the usual YouTube business if you want to see more videos like this from me from now on. Give a like or comment as you see fit and enjoy the rest of your day. Kia kaha. Stay strong. Everybody knows the world ain't right. Down on your knees, get up and fight.